Prime Time News tonight at 8 p.m. I'm now for winners and losers on Wall Street. Rob Black joining us to break down today's financial headlines. Rob, thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to start off with it's the beginning of the year, right? Yes. We're looking at 2018. Uh, stocks. We just had the tax deal get passed at yes. the end of last year, and it looks what pretty pretty bullish, right, going into this year. Bullish for corporations. Okay. Not so bullish for Californians. Um, People ask me, where's the market going to go? It's up eight and a half years. It's crushing real estate. It's having a great run. Of course, you're not using other people's money. But a forecast out of Bank America, Merrill Lynch, and this is not a five day forecast like we have here at Crown and the Weather. This is a year forecast. They think the market could go up 19% in 2018 based on the idea that the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the SP 500, the NASDAQ Composite, the Russell 2000, the SP Mid Cap 400, the Dow Transports, the Dow Utilities all hit record highs in 2018. 2017, and no one's talking about it. No one's excited about it. No one's exuberant out about it. Let's talk Bitcoin. Let's talk about the Kardashians coming up with a Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Everyone gets excited, but the stock market doing its thing. No one gets excited. Low interest rates, low inflation, good global growth, solid corporate earnings, and now lower co uh, taxes on corporate earnings means this market can go higher. That's not my prediction. I'm not in the business of predictions. Um, maybe I can get a crystal ball or something <laughs> going here. Um, but again, the, the forecast out of Bank of America Merrill Lynch is up almost 20 percent. That's stunning. Now, is that too fast, too hot? Is that, or is that looking like a, a healthy positive you, growth? You'll rate? know it's too fast, too hot when the security guard at Cron says, I should put some more money in the market, right, Mr. Black? I'm like, no. Okay. <laughs> like, when people start speculating and saying things like, maybe I should sell my house and buy yeah. stocks, yeah. like they did in the 90s. Um, and now people are saying, should I you know, sell my stocks and buy houses? Uh, there's nothing sexy about Wall Street at this point in time, so it can still creep higher. Okay, so hopefully that's all good news for all of our 401k plans. Yep. Uh, now, in the loser column, though, let's talk about what is also going up, which is the cost of gas. Or at least that's the expectation for the year ahead, right? What, what's behind that? Um, supply and demand. Yeah. And OPEC's doing a good job of keeping supply moderate. They're cheating a little bit. Uh, U.S. continues to grow nationally. Um, you know, when we just talked about earnings the worldwide, when you earn money, you tend to go on vacations, you mm -hmm. tend to travel, you tend to book business. The typical American household spends about $1,898 in gas this year. Last year it was about 1765 so that's about a 6% increase. Americans spend about $364 billion this year, we will, on gasoline. That's $25.4 billion. Now, to me, higher gasoline is a tax. Lower gasoline is a tax cut mm. because, James, you only have so much money to uh, spend every month. And if you're putting it in your gas tank, it's not going into the restaurants. It's not going into the museums. It's not going into um, travel. It's not going into vacation. So higher gas stinks on the West Coast. It's the worst. San Francisco, it's the worst in the U.S. 395. Uh, if you and I want tax relief as far as gasoline prices go, we need to move Houston. Mm. 265. I don't want to move to Houston, <laughs> but that's what we would have to do. <laughs> All right, good enough. Um, and then let's end on a, on a happier story here. This is one I'm pretty excited about: the dollar menu coming back to McDonald's. Yeah, it's been right? a while. Um, the dollar menu was too limiting. Franchisees hated it. They want the one dollar, two dollar, three dollar menu, and this starts tomorrow at McDonald's. Wall Street loves this idea. They're calling it their favorite restaurant stock of the year. It's tough to call McDonald's a restaurant when you have so many great restaurants in the Bay Area. Mm. But with that being said, a single patty cheeseburger sausage burrito, one dollar. Maybe we could tempt you with a two-piece buttermilk crispy tenders and a small McCafe beverage, two dollars. You want a splurge sausage McMuffin with egg or classic chicken sandwich? Three dollars. Mm. Happy meals for kids? Um, Three dollars. So this is a good idea for McDonald's to tier pricing it. A big winner from the tax reform, believe it or not, is the average consumer in America. Uh, they're going to see lower taxes, means a little more dollars. That means no vacations, but maybe a little more McDonald's. Um, and a lower tax bill also going to help. Um, of course, McDonald's has competition, but you look at their stock, it's almost at an all time high all the time. You may not like the quality, you may not like the grease, but you have to like the earnings and you have to like the fact that middle, uh, middle America shops and eats at McDonald's on a regular basis. Interesting. All right. Another fast food thing I just learned this morning uh, Taco Bell. Bringing fries to the menu late January. Cheaper than McDonald's. Keep that in mind. All right. Well, we're going to finish off with one quick question from a viewer. This coming to us from Graham. Graham asking, Can Amazon keep growing its stock price and business model? How much bigger can Amazon get? Uh, they got a PE of 276. The average on the Wall Street is about 16. Uh, they were up 57% last year. Mm -hmm. But there was rumors. Not only have they gone after Whole Foods getting into food, there's rumors that they're going to buy Target. 
Wow. Target's got 10,000 plus stores wow. in the United States. Uh, Walmart's got 50,000. This would be a smart acquisition for Amazon just to use their share price. They don't even have to pay cash. They could use paper money, uh, which is even better than real money. Um, but yeah, um, the, the, the peril category for a 24 year old company like Amazon, you're talking about a trillion dollars in global sales. Um, and they don't have to have the inventory on hand. They could have it shipped from, you know, a manufacturer in China. Um, it could come from many places. So Amazon continues to grow. They continue to impress. And at some point in time, the government's going to say, we don't like you, Amazon. And that will be a buying opportunity when the stock craters. All right. Good enough, Rob. Thank you, as always. And don't forget, you can send your questions in to Rob. Uh, you can reach out to him on email, cronford.com, Twitter, Facebook, all that available for you. We'll be right back. I've got to tell you something important.